Hi everyone, this is Mr. Trio, and this week we will begin a new core topic, which is how effectively did the USA contain the spread of communism? Now, in many ways, this unit uh, follows up on our previous one, which was about who was to blame for the Cold War. Essentially, this topic uh, also focuses on Cold War topics, so uh, you may want to spend a little time working with these two um, chapters together because they have a lot of similarities. As we get into the content, uh, one of the things that I like to point out is that there are three focus points for this particular unit. The first is the Korean War. The second, why did America become involved in Cuba? And then finally, why did America become involved in Vietnam? Let's take a minute to look at a timeline so we understand where the three focus points fall. The first, Korea, happens shortly after the end of the Second World War. Cuba happens in the mid-60s. And then Vietnam is perhaps the longest period, which it starts in the 60s, and extends all the way through the mid 70s. One of the things that I think that is very effective when we look at these three focus points is to try to focus on what are the big ideas? What are the big ideas that we are trying to focus on with Korea, Vietnam, and Cuba? Well, the first idea is that we need to understand the lessons of the League of Nations. Remember way back when we studied this in chapter two, Essentially, why did the League of Nations fail, and how could the leaders of the 1950s learn those lessons from the League of Nations in order to be more effective against communism in the 1950s? The second big idea is that with Cuba, it is the closest point in which the world came to going to nuclear war. So. The rising tension of nuclear war is one of the most important aspects of this particular focus point. And we'll talk about that a little later, of course. And then finally, with Vietnam, communism through the lens of the domino effect. And we'll have a brief discussion about what the domino effect means. With the Korean War, I like to put up a series of photographs to kind of get your mind thinking about what the issue is that we need to focus on. Some of these photographs may look familiar, some of them may not, but let's begin. With the first photograph, and as it relates to the Korean War, is how to address hostile leaders. Following World War II, many people saw that Hitler, Mussolini, and other hostile leaders could have been stopped earlier, but the world stage decided to ignore them. So how would the Korean War be different? Our second photograph you may recognize as the invasion of Manchuria in the 1930s. So as with the Korean War, how are we going to react to a military aggression? Remember this guy in the center? Prime Minister Chamberlain. With hostile forces, are we going to appease them? Remember, this is a core topic in Chapter 3 on why had international peace collapsed. You may not recognize this flag, but it is the flag of the United Nations. So one of the big questions is, how will the United Nations be different than the League of Nations? And then, just for fun, why did I put this sparrow? Because I want you to remember that what we're looking at here is how can big problems be handled as well as the small problems in this new international stage uh, following World War II. Second focus point is about Cuba. Once again, let's look at some photos to, to get our thoughts moving. First question, what changed with the Cuban Revolution? Cuban Revolution, which we will go into more detail, is when Fidel Castro 
and with the help of others like Che Guevara, uh, helped to change Cuba from a capitalist society under the thumb of the United States to a communist society. Why was that significant to the United States? One of the other big areas that we will focus on is President Kennedy here and how should he have reacted to the events in Cuba, specifically looking at the Cuban Missile Crisis and the Bay of Pigs invasion. And then finally, how close did the world come to nuclear war? This is a core topic of the Cold War era. Last focus point, Vietnam. Here's a series of photos. What are the questions that we want to ask and think about? Why was communism a threat to the United States? And essentially this goes back to our big idea of the domino effect. The domino effect can be illustrated by this series of blocks. On the far left we have China, Korea, Vietnam, Thailand, Burma, and India. And the whole idea is that if one of these countries falls to communism, such as China did, then essentially it would cause a chain reaction in which all the others would fall as well. President Eisenhower was known to have said, you have a row of dominoes set up, you knock over the first one, and what will happen to the last one is that it will go over very quickly. This is essentially the whole idea behind why America felt like it was so important to get into Vietnam and stop communism. Because if they did not stop communism um, in Vietnam, then it would spread to other places in the world. So let's go back to our pictures. Here we have President Lyndon Johnson. And the question that we have is why did the United States intervene in Vietnam? And subsequently, why did they eventually withdraw? So those are our three focus points for this particular unit. Uh, there will be a series of videos, one for each of the focus points, and then we will have one video which will be a conclusion in which we'll look at some sample questions and things of that nature. So please focus on chapter five in your textbook, which begins on page number 88. And um, I look forward to the discussions that we will have in class. See you around.